What's going on everybody? Maker Mods here, back at it again with another new video. Today we're going to be taking another look at the Ponage Ultra Custom. So here is my non-hot swapped Ponage Ultra Custom. We're just going to today make this thing hot swap. So first let's take a look at the tools that you're going to need. You will need a T3, T4, T5, T6, and T7 drivers. Now you'll notice that uh, I have a couple Weehaws and Awera. I personally, after having you know used all these tools to do the hot swap itself, would recommend picking up Wera, um, Torx, screwdrivers, if you don't have any. Uh, only because the tip seems to be a little more narrow at the end. Yeah, the tip seems a little longer, if that makes sense, compared to the, uh, the Weehaws, which are a little shorter. Because of that, I, I recommend getting uh, Weras if you are starting from scratch. You'll also need some Milmax sockets, solder, at least one Phillips screwdriver, and a soldering iron. So let's get to it. First thing we're going to do is remove the, up, the top shell from the uh, base of the mouse. There are two screw holes right here underneath the rear uh, PTFE feet. If you're careful with taking them off, you'll be able to take them off and reuse them. These are a little crooked, if you can see. I've taken them off a couple times and I've reused them. There's really no issues. Still glides just fine. But make sure that you're careful with them if you want to reuse them or if you don't have any extras. Once you do that, you're going to use a screwdriver to remove one screw at the top and two screws right here, one on each side of the battery compartment. Once you remove those two screws, the battery will come off. It's held in the back by a little clip that kind of clips in. There's little feet that screw in. And there's a tiny little connector that you can wiggle loose. Now that that's off, we just have to remove this one last screw to separate the two pieces. And voila! Your scroll wheel will just fall out as well the bottom uh, crystal that diffuses the optical sensor. There's one more piece here, which is the switch piece. Make sure you don't lose that. Now we can put this aside. So here is the PCB in all of its glory. As you can see, I've got the Kyle GM 4.0s already installed. We're going to be removing those to take out uh, to install the Milmax sockets. You can see my crappy soldering job that I already did. So. These two pins on the left click mouse are going to be blocked by this kind of like insulating pad as will the, the third pin on the right mouse button. So you just want to kind of scrape those off. I tried scraping at first but then in the process of soldering and desoldering I, I started burning the material. So then I decided it was probably just easier to uh, you know cut it off. So I just scraped it off right there. If you want it to be neater you can maybe cut it in advance before you start applying heat because the heat will start to melt or char the material. One thing I forgot to mention is you're obviously going to have to desolder your old switches uh, before you can install the Milmax sockets or do any of the mods. I use a desoldering gun uh, because I used to uh, do a lot of switch harvesting uh, for like Alps and Cherry MX switches. If you don't have a desoldering gun, you know, you can obviously use wick or a solder sucker. Although that probably will be a little more difficult. This thing is a lifesaver, and if uh, you do a lot of modding, it's honestly, it pays for itself. So I'm definitely missing some solder, so I'm going to have to try again. Done with that, it pulls right out. Voila! And now comes the really unfun part. This is probably the most nerve wracking part of the whole process. What you need to do is start with your T3 Torx driver. You need to, from the top, stick it in uh, the hole and essentially I'm going to do it on this uh, view because you can see it a little better. You just need to start screwing in, kind of uh, removing material. And what you're essentially doing is 
you're making enough room for the Milmax socket to fit in because the hole will not fit the uh, Milmax sockets that we're using. We just need to enlarge the hole. And so definitely, you know, slow and steady wins the race with this. You don't want to be trying to, uh, you know, win any rewards for speed or anything like that. But you're just spinning it until, you see how it popped out on the other side? That's the tip of my driver. You kind of want to work it in a little bit more until the hole is large enough now to go to the next size easily. And you see the T4 is, it's still kind of a little hard. I have to be very careful. So one way to kind of get rid of that difficulty is by going a little uh, deeper in with the T3. As you can see from the tip of the driver, it's tapered. It starts off really, really, you know, obviously the T3 size, and then it gets slightly wider in diameter as it goes up uh, toward the handle. So you're removing T3, uh, and then if you kind of give a little more even pressure, it's going to be uh, large enough where the T4 is going to fit with no problems. So that was T3, now we're on the T4. One thing that I wanted to note is I have my finger up against the back of the hole for two reasons. One, so I'll be able to feel when the driver uh, kind of makes makes it all the way through. Uh, the second reason is so that I can support the PCB and I don't you know snap something or, or bend or break it. And as I'm spinning it now, I can literally feel the driver poking through onto my fingertip. And that's how I know that I need to start uh, being a little more careful because I don't want to go too deep. Now it's probably not as uh, important for the T3, T4, even the T5, but after the T6 especially, uh, you want to be very careful, and I'm going to show you why in a bit. But for now, just make sure you're, you're working through. So we just did T3, T4, now we're on to T5. And the Wera driver, it seems, like I said earlier, it's a little more... Um, kind of countersunk or, or not that's not the word a little more tapered so it's much easier to fit in not only that but the bit material seems to remove uh, material way faster maybe it's like the shape of it or something see like I'm already through uh, on the Wera so this is the T5 now going to the T6 coming through and I just noticed that my my driver is really crooked so I want to make sure that I'm keeping it straight it's just weird trying to make sure that my camera angles are, are good and stuff but once I finish this first one I'm gonna do the rest of them off camera because it's the same procedure for all of them and if you look at that hole I mean it's significantly larger, right? Now the T7, this is where it gets really tricky and this is the pretty much the entire reason why I wanted to do this guide in the first place because if you put the T... If you insert the Milmax sockets, and I don't know where mine went, and so remember, these are 7305 Milmax sockets. Uh, I got them from ringerkeys.com. It's an awesome guy. You know, he sends a personal email every order you make, which is really cool. Uh, I really appreciated that. But basically, if you try to insert a Milmax socket, and I don't know where my tweezers are. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to show you as best I can. Let me see if I can even get closer. Okay, so right now you can see that the Milmax socket is inserted the problem is there's a lip and even though that lip is probably like a millimeter it doesn't seem like it would be that important that one millimeter is going to prevent your mouse from actuating properly so what we need to do is countersink the hole which is where the T7 bit comes into play 
In order to counter sink, sink, excuse me, we're going to very carefully do the same thing, but we're not going to go all the way through. If you go all the way through, and I accidentally did on my other mouse, and it was just a huge headache because the Milmax socket will fall all the way through if you allow the T7, uh, the hole to become T7 sized. So what you need to do is basically just work really carefully until it's about to pierce through the other side and kind of just keep working at it but make sure with your finger that you do not allow the driver to, to go all the way through because your life will suck after that. Another thing I noticed is as you're doing this, there's going to be a material, uh, just kind of copper material that raises up sometimes. And the best thing to do is to keep going until that, sometimes that material will just wear off. Um, if it doesn't, I found on one of my switches, I actually had to um, sand it down ever so slightly because that little bit of material, same thing, it's going to prevent your Milmax socket from being properly flush with the PCB, which is what we need. And so I just got like a sandpaper pad. I think this is 100 grit. It's just whatever I had. Um, it's not that rough. If you're lucky, it'll just kind of wear off while you're twisting your driver around. Go figure that this one, no, it's not doing that. Uh, but I think it's better so that way you guys can see all of the... the the difficulties in doing this um, it's not like really hard you know it's not like there's a huge risk of destroying anything but I would say there, there's a, a slight a slight chance that you know you'll foobar something up so if you see that socket it's still not flush with the PCB which is what you want now I think you can get away with it being very slightly raised but it's to me, it's not really worth it. It's like, I would rather get it perfect the first time so I'm not stressed out about it you know, afterwards because on my first mouse, this all happened off camera, but basically I had to desolder and resolder about five or six times, you know, tear the mouse apart every single time. And it was, get, you know, I almost like lost faith in the project, um, but luckily I was able to get this done. Okay, so this clip is 20 minutes. I'm gonna stop it here. So I recorded the whole procedure and it took a couple hours, honestly. Um, my camera overheated like three times and I just realized it's way too much footage uh, for a DIY video. And um, I think seeing how I did the first uh, Milmax socket is pretty self-explanatory. You just have to go through, make sure you're really careful and um, just do it really you know, slowly and, and steadily. Slow and steady wins the race. So here is the completed mouse, uh, works just fine. I've got uh, the Kyle GM 2.0 teals swapped in there right now, just because you know I wanted to give them a try uh, and everything works just fine. But if you guys have any questions, you know I had a lot of people saying that they wanted to try this mod on their own pucks. And um, if you have any questions while you're doing so, don't hesitate to leave a comment. Um, but yeah, that's not gonna be it for today guys because this video with just one switch is already uh, like over 10 minutes long. I don't want to waste your guys' time. But please reach out if you have any questions, guys, um, or if you have any concerns, if you know you are unsure about any steps. I tried to document it as clearly as possible, so uh, it should be pretty uh, smooth sailing from here for you guys. But anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I will see you all in the next one.